So, hi everyone. Um, I haven't done an update in a while again. It's probably how most of my videos start. But um, to be honest, as, as time goes on, there's not really much to report on. So I've kind of been waiting till I have lots of news to report on, and then making a video like I am today. So, uh, where to start, really? Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, yeah, so um, I went to London and um, today, and basically I was only going for my second referral, um, but it all turned into a very good day, basically. Um, so to start off with the good news, I got a phone call today from St George's Hospital in London basically saying that there's been a cancellation um, for, like somebody else has cancelled the date for top surgery on the 8th of January and would I like to take their place? So I pretty much screamed on the phone and said yes, uh, I would love to take their place. So <coughs> finally getting top surgery after eight years of waiting on the 8th of January. So I'm literally, quite literally, buzzing. Um, Although I'm not really jumping around in this video right now, I have just driven to London and back, which has taken me nine hours today, so I'm a little bit tired. But honestly, I couldn't be more excited right now. I'm I'm literally, like, ugh, just sh ugh, just sheer high pitch excitement it going on in my mind right now. But, um, yeah, like, in other news, sort of running up to this day, um, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago, and while I was away in Liverpool for my birthday, I got a phone call from a journalist um, who was very interested in following my story, which sort of all came together at the right time, really. Um, but um, that journalist has interviewed me, and uh, you know she's it's going in a magazine, and I might be going on TV and stuff like that. So it's all very exciting. Um, I've got to take. She's asked me to take loads of pictures of when I have my surgery now, so that can go in probably probably go in the magazine too. I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, that's that's all good news. Um, so, not your typical video of, yeah, it's been two months since blah blah blah, and this has changed and that has changed, because, to be honest, right now I'm not even thinking about that, I can't even, I can't even tell you what's changed. My mind is so blank right now, it's so full of excitement, with, with the idea that my surgery is in a matter of weeks, today being the 17th of December, so, less than a month away, I'm not going to have to wear a binder anymore, it's just going to be so amazing. Um, so, what I'm looking to do is what a lot of people have done on um, YouTube and actually give my binders away to people who are less fortunate and can't afford to get some. So um, actually I'll show you my binders now. <laughs> okay so I just got my binders. Um, I have, I think this is an extra small from Underworks, um, but it's black. Typical black binder that comes to about here-ish uh, on you. Um, so there's one extra small black. Uh, I have one white, um, but that's that's a small. I'm assuming. I think. Let me check size now. Yeah, that one's a small. There's a about one inch difference around the middle, uh, and then another black, which I believe is again extra small. Uh, and the one I'm wearing is white. Um, extra, no, total lies, just a small I think that one is. So, four binders to give away. Um, and I also have a swimming binder, so, um, two seconds, I'll, I'll find that one in a minute. So, uh, yeah, I have a swim binder, um, which is actually pretty cool, not a lot of people have these. So, um... It just looks like any other, um, like rash vest really, um, but it has a zip on the front, because um, obviously it's a, it's a little bit, I say a little bit tighter, it sort of is and it isn't, it's really quite bizarre, but um, yeah, so it has that zip on the front, um, which you put on, and then zip up, and then chucks away, uh, you can just go swimming and not really be noticed. Um, it saves people, like I wore my binder with a t-shirt for many years. I actually bought this for Australia last year. Um, I wore it a couple of times, like a handful of times, um, over the five weeks I was in Australia. So that's literally been worn five or six times, um, if that. Um, so that cost me 80 quid. 
So um, I'll give that away too. Um, but um, I'd really like it if you either added me on Facebook and let me know if you need a binder, um, or um, send me a message on YouTube, but you're more likely to get me on my Facebook, if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> brilliant news. Um, literally buzzing. And to tear it all off, I did. I did with a few complications. I did get my second referral today from my uh, fellow plast fa fellow. I can't even ever say it. Fellow plastic surgery, surgery, something like that. Lower surgery, basically. Um, so I got that today. So now I'm on the waiting list for that. They reckon that should be done by the end of next year. So, to be honest, right now, I just want to get my top surgery done and dusted. And even though it's going to be freezing in January, February, March. I'm probably going to be topless at some point, I imagine. So, just because I can. So, um, yeah, another thing they did talk to me about actually today was um, asked me if I used an STP, and I know a lot of you are aware of these. Um, I'm not sure what the prices are in America, um, but the one company I found in the UK that makes STPs costs about a £1,000. Uh, and the nurse, actually, like the doctor, said to me today, Oh, so you don't use one? And I was like, well, no, they're a thousand pounds. And she just looked at me like, what, and you haven't got one? And I was like, some of us haven't got a thousand pounds to spend on an artificial penis, to be honest. So, and she said, oh, don't you have problems going to the toilet and stuff? And I was like, no, I go the same way I've gone all my life. Just like most FTMs, I should imagine. So, yeah, that that was a tiny bit weird. But I did, funnily enough... Um, I did get this today, which is Patient's Guide to Phalloplasty Techniques, and it's got lots of pictures in it, and to be honest, I was reading through it while I was in the waiting room, and I nearly started crying because it was so scary, and then by the end of it, I was like, hmm, this is actually pretty damn exciting, because by the end of this leaflet, it's telling you um, about sensation and feeling when uh, during sex and stuff like that, so I was like, bonus. But, um... The only thing that worries me a little bit is that, uh, basically, because I'm so thin, they can't take the skin off my arm, which is great, because of this. So, that's worked out quite well for me. Uh, being tiny is always a plus. But, um, so they said that it might either be off the inside of my thigh, or off the back of my legs. So when I thought back of my legs, I thought back of my thigh. Now, it turns out, that is what they mean by the back of their legs. That's actually scar in there. So... Not too sure about that. Especially if it's going to make my bum go flat or something like that. I'm not, not too sure. Really not sure. I just hope they take it from the back, of, uh, from the inside of my legs. But I'll show you the result now of a penis that's, well, female to male. Blah, blah, blah. So, it's quite dark, but you can sort of see what's going on. You can't really see... In my, well, for me... I'm not sure I'd know if I seen an FTM, if I could tell the difference between that and a natural born male, in all fairness. So, uh, I seem to be quite pleased, but then there is pictures in here of like, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say mistakes, but, um, errors, maybe. But there's like, I'm, I'm not quite sure which stage this is, I haven't had time to, um, read through it properly, but basically they sort of make this first which is basically just the body of the penis without the head and then they put the head on it I think and then they deal with size later weirdly enough I think they deal with um, the length of it later so if you want it to be bigger so to speak then you it's one of the last procedures but um, I'm not going to show you those pictures these pictures are just so like they freak me out I'm not gonna lie. I know I've got to go through this but um, I'm going to be out of it so it doesn't matter um, let's see how the picture has gone. Yeah, so, this is a picture in it which, um, does worry me a little bit. I wish it was a bit lighter in here, but, um, can't really. So, for me, that I think that's like an inch long, if that, um, with the world's smallest testicles. So it's slightly worrying. But the scars are actually a lot bigger than I expected them to be. Um, 
I think we well, yeah you've seen the scars on the last one anyway, but um yeah so oh and this is interesting I I I kind of always wondered I knew like, they obviously put tubes in your penis to pump it up or whatever but I kind of wondered what those tubes looked like how it worked and stuff like that so this is actually the thing that goes inside so there's like um, a pump thing here and then that's a ball full of liquid which I guess goes in the other testicle and then these things go in your penis but they basically are soft when you want it to be and then you just insert the liquid uh, in through through the pump into the tubes which then gives you an erection so uh, but there is something a paragraph on here I briefly read earlier saying that that's been found not to be too great um, because of uh, stuff breaking and then it forever standing up so that sounds quite awkward but um, they are in the making like in the middle of making um, better ones basically like they, they did have one made of steel that somehow could bend without obviously force but it could somehow bend naturally and then stiffen up naturally as well pun definitely intended but this is the final result of somebody else and this isn't classed as internet porn by the way I, d I don't want people thinking that I'm breaching any rules or anything like that but I'm purely doing this to help other people uh, to, so they know what they're yet to expect but um, I think if I look like that possibly bigger I'll, I'll be happy so yeah uh, for me that's well that's pretty damn cool like um, they did ask me a couple of questions about you know w waiting for technology to advance and stuff like that and I I mean you know the way I look at it is that I was born when I was born so this is my time now and if in 50 years time they do something better that's great but I ain't waiting until then to have that better thing I think I'd rather have what they can do now than wait for another 10, 20, 30 years. So, um, yeah, to be honest, I just can't wait to get it all done. Um, 2014 is going to be the year for me. So, but um, thank you everyone for your overwhelming support that I get day in, day out. Um, without all of you guys, I really wouldn't be me. Um, and especially thanks to my girlfriend, because without her, I wouldn't even believe in myself. So, um, yeah, this, you know, having you guys, my mum, my girlfriend, I'm, I'm, I know I'm a lot luckier than some, some of you out there, I understand that, I get that, but I'm going to spend my life helping everyone else out, because that's what I want to do. So, thanks again guys, thanks for watching, um, be sure to check out my other videos, um, if you need any help then just message me and I'll put a link to my Facebook page underneath this video. So, I'll see you for now. Bye. Oh, and one more thing. Have a very good Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you on the other side.